Good morning and uh, welcome to morning prayer. I'm sorry uh, it's tardy today. I had a phone call just to in at uh, uh, at uh, oh just before well, I had a, had a phone call which I needed to take. So I, I do apologise for that. Hope this finds you well, in good heart and in good spirits on this uh, chilly morning today. It's uh, back to being quite. It's uh, nippy. It was a very clear night last night. Saw some stars and things, but uh, uh, of course that means it's going to be on the chillier side during the winter. Um, as I say, I hope this finds you well this morning. I uh, hope you're warm and keeping safe. Um, just a reminder that this Sunday we have a service at 10 o'clock at Stratton. Um, uh, all, all are welcome and uh, it would be good to see you there if you're able to make it. Today, oh, I think today is the day where we remember Thomas Aquinas, 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 priest, philosopher and teacher of the faith. We'll read a little bit about him. Thomas, born in 1225, was the youngest son of the Count of Aquina. He was, by all accounts, a large man who moved slowly and serenely through his daily tasks. He studied at, studied at Naples University, and his fellow students christened him the Dumb Ox. Hmm. In 1224, Thomas joined... Sorry... Sorry about this. It says he was born in 1225, but in 1224 he joined the Order of Preachers, otherwise known as the Dominican Friars. I'll try and work the maths out at some point. At this time the Dominicans were spreading rapidly through Europe, and in particular focusing their work within universities. The Dominicans were relat a relatively new order, and Thomas's family would have preferred him to join the more established Benedictine order, membership of which opened doors into influential positions in society. In response to his decision to join the Dominicans, Thomas's family kidnapped him in an attempt to make him change his mind. Although they detained him for two years, they were unsuccessful. Thomas also studied at Paris and Cologne, returning to Paris to lecture in, in 15, sorry, 1252. From that time he from that time on, he taught in both Paris and Italy until he died in 1574. He wrote Summary Against the Gentiles between 1252 and 1255, and in 1266 began his most famous work, Summa Theologiae, in which he considered key aspects and doctrines of Christianity. A clear challenge was faced, which faced Thomas was whether to integrate or to challenge the philosophy of Aristotle which had begun to enjoy a resurgence in the universities. Thomas chose to integrate the philosophy and combined Aristotle's teaching with the Catholic doctrine, basing his theological considerations on an Arist Aristotelian framework. Unsurprisingly, his views aroused passions and debate and did not go unopposed. Indeed, after his death, some of his teachings were relegated or ignored. It was not until recent centuries especially since Vatican II, that he has become more widely appreciated. Thomas is well known for his teaching on the Eucharist, in which he defended the doctrine of the real presence of Christ. His understanding of Christ continuing the work of redemption through the sacraments was highly influential of the development of Catholic ecclesio ecclesiology and doctrine. On the 6th of December, 1273, Thomas announced to the world that he would write no more, and that he had written, all that he had written was straw. The reasons for this are unclear. It may have been the result of either an immense spiritual experience or simply a breakdown from overwork. The prayer attributed to Thomas reveals the motives and desires of this forward-looking theologian. Pepper, stop it. Here's the prayer. It's on another page, sorry. And the cat's really not making it very easy. 
So as we begin our service, oh, dear me. try to find some peace as Pippa's trying to find peace. And as we begin our service, let's pray this prayer of Thomas Aquinas. Most loving Lord, grant me a steadfast heart which no unworthy desire may drag downwards, an unconquered heart which no hardship may wear out, an upright heart which no worthless purpose may ensnare. Impart to me also, O God, the understanding to you, the diligence to seek you, sorry, the understanding to know you, the diligence to seek you, a way of life to please you, and a faithfulness that may embrace you, through Jesus Christ my Lord. Amen. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Your light springs up for the righteous, and all the peoples have seen your glory. Blessed are you, Sovereign God, King of the nations. To you be praise and glory for ever. From the rising of the sun to its setting, your name is proclaimed in all the world. As the sun of righteousness dawns in our hearts, anoint our lips with the seal of your Spirit, that we may witness to your gospel and sing your praise in all the earth. Blessed be God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God for ever. I will be joyful in the Lord all the earth. Serve the Lord with gladness and come before his presence with a song. Know that the Lord is God. It is he that, he, it is he that has made us and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and bless his name. For the Lord is gracious, his steadfast love is everlasting, and his faithfulness endures from generation to generation. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be for ever. Amen. The night has passed and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. Psalm 61 You are my refuge, O God, a strong tower against the enemy. Hear my crying, O God, and listen to my prayer. From the end of the earth I call to you with fainting heart. O set me on the rock that is higher than I, for you are my refuge, a strong tower against the enemy. Let me dwell in your tent for ever, and take refuge under the cover of your wings. For you, O God, will hear my vows, you will grant the request of those who fear your name. You will add length to the days you will add length of the days to the life of the king, and his years may endure throughout all generations. May he sit enthroned before God for ever, may steadfast love and truth watch over him. So will I always sing praise to your name, and day by day fulfil my vows. You are my refuge, O God, a strong tower against the enemy. Let us pray. Risen Christ, as you knew the discipline of suffering, and the victory that brings us salvation, so grant us your presence in our weakness, and a place in your unending kingdom, now and forevermore.
glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be for ever. Amen. If you wish to read the Old Testament reading, it's from um, Genesis chapter 16. And it's... Um, uh, it's the account of Abraham and Sarah, oh, Abraham and Sarai, and um, um, Hagar. So it's that um, tricky human account, and as you look on it, it, it could be seen as. Uh, in today's eyes, you might see it as, as um, um, an abuse type thing, I suppose. Really, Abraham taking Abraham and Sarai taking advantage of the slave girl, Hagar. But of course, it's a completely different culture and environment, and um, a completely different story. Oh, happy birthday, Pat. Happy birthday. Didn't realise. Oh. I hope you have a wonderful and blessed day. We're going to move on to our canticle. And um, but, but, but I'm going to use number 31. So I pressed on the hyperlink. We have a song of the covenant. I have given you as a light to the nations, and I have called you in righteousness. Thus says God, who created the heavens, who fashioned the earth and all that dwells in it, who gives breath to the people upon it, and spirit to those who walk in it. I am the Lord, and I have called you in righteousness. I have taken you by the hand and kept you. I have given you as a covenant to the people, a light to the nations, to open the eyes that are blind, to bring out the captives from the dungeon, from the prison, those who sit in darkness. I am the Lord, that is my name, my glory I give to no other. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be for ever. Amen. I have given you as a light to the nations, and I have called you in righteousness. Today's reading is from Matthew chapter 26, verses 57 to the end. And this is a reminder, I think it's in the Liturgy for Sunday, where we turn from the stable and from the story of Jesus' birth and Emmanuel, we turn from the stable to the cross. And this is a reminder of that. Those who had arrested Jesus took him to Caiaphas, the high priest, in whose house the scribes and the elders had gathered. But Peter was following him at a distance, as far as the courtyard of the high priest. And going inside, he sat with the guards in order to see how this would end. Now the chief priests and the whole council were looking for false testimony against Jesus, so that they might put him to death. But they found none. Though many false witnesses came forward. At last, two came forward and said, This fellow said, I am able to destroy the temple of God and to build it in three days. The high priest stood up and said, have you no answer? Was it that they testify against what what is it that they testify against you? But Jesus but Jesus excuse me but Jesus was silent. Then the high priest said to him, I put you under oath before the living God. Tell us if you are the Messiah, the Son of God. Jesus said to him, You have said so. But I tell you, from now on you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of power and coming on the clouds in heaven. Then the high priest tore his clothes and said, He has blasphemed. Why do we still need witnesses? 
You have now heard his blasphemy. What is your verdict? They answered, He deserves death. They spat at his face and struck him. Some slapped him, saying, Prophesy to us, you Messiah. Who is it that struck you? Now Peter, who was sitting outside in the courtyard, sorry, now Peter was sitting outside in the courtyard. A servant girl came to him and said, You were also with Jesus the Galilean. But he denied it before all of them, saying, I do not know what you're talking about. But when he went out, went out to the porch, another servant girl saw him, and, he, and she said to the bystanders, This man was with the Jesus of Nazareth. Again he denied it with an oath. I do not know this man. And after a little while the bystanders came up and said to Peter, Certainly are you also one of them, for your accent betrays you. Then he began to curse and he swore an oath. I do not know the man. At that moment the cock crowed. Then Peter remembered what Jesus had said. Before the cock crows you will deny me three times. And he went out and wept bitterly. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I'll read the... Um, Reflection from uh, Malcolm Wheat, or Geit. But it strikes me how what is playing out here is what Jesus had predicted, not just in terms of prophesying what was going to happen for the sake of the whole hum of humanity, really, but also that very personal story of Peter, what's going to happen for him. P um, Jesus knew that Peter was going to struggle. He also knew that Peter would be redeemed though. It's also, it's an almost unbearable moment the one who gives us our freedom is bound. The one who took spittle and made of it a healing salve for the blind is spat upon with blind fury. The one who knows us intimately, who knows we are, who we are far better than we do ourselves, is struck in the face and asked by that lost violator, who is it that struck you? He knows who that tormentor is better than he knows himself in that moment. For that abuser, drunk on violence, has forgotten himself, but Jesus knows and remembers and will soon speak words of forgiveness from the cross and, the value, and values the lives of his enemies at the price of his own heart's blood. Who is it that struck you? Peter will have to answer that question too. For he is about to deliver to Jesus a slap in the face far more hurtful than those outer blows, the stinging slap of betrayal. Who is it that struck you? When Peter goes out to weep bitterly, he thinks he knows the answer. Peter, the rock who turned out to be more than quick, no more than quicksand. Peter the weak. Peter the coward. Peter the traitor. But that is not the final answer to that question, for Jesus has a better one, and Peter will only know himself as, G as Jesus knows him when each betrayal is undone by love. Let us pray. God of all mercy, your Son proclaim good news to the poor, release to the captives, and freedom to the oppressed. Anoint us with your Holy Spirit, and set all your people pr free to praise you in Christ our Lord. Amen. I worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Let the whole earth tremble before him. 
tell it out among the nations that the Lord is King. I worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Tell out his salvation from day to day. Let the whole earth tremble before him. Declare his glories among the nations and his wonders among all peoples. I worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Let the whole earth tremble before him. Those who are wise will shine as brightly as the heavens, and those who have instructed many in virtue will shine like stars for all eternity. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty Saviour, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets, God promised of old to save us from our enemies from the hands of all that hate us, to show mercy to our ancestors and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of all their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. Those who are wise will shine as brightly as the heavens, and those who have instructed many in virtue will shine like stars for all eternity. We come to our time of intercession, and uh, I'm going to use, oh, excuse me, I'm going to use some of this, the uh, the prayers, the forms of prayers that we have set out, and if you can bear with me a second, uh, I'm just going to find the prayer lists. So I've got a bit of claws in me then. So let us pray. Let us by prayer and intercession with thanksgiving make our requests to God. Gracious God, we pray for peace, justice and reconciliation throughout the world. We pray for the honouring of human rights, for the relief of the oppressed. And we give you thanks for all that is gracious in the lives of men, women and children. We lift before you, dear Father, this, um, this world. We lift before you its imperfections, its shortcomings, and the way that we <clears throat> have contributed to that. We pray that your spirit may flow so that we may be transformed and that this world may be transformed. Where there is words of hatred and conflict and threats of war, 
we pray, dear Father, that they will be replaced with words of reconciliation, understanding and peace. And we pray, dear Father, that that may be true in our lives as well. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the renewal of the church in faith, love and service. We pray for Viv and Lee, our bishops. And we pray for the life of our communities and our community together as your people. We give you thanks for the gift of your word and the grace of the sacraments and the fellowship of your people. We give you thanks and praise, dear Father, for your church. We give you thanks and praise for one another, for the richness and the diversity for the love, for the commitment that is shared. Fill us with your spirit, Lord, that we will all play a part of bringing the good news of your salvation and the hope you have offered us all. That we will bring that good news to our communities, to those whom we cherish that we will be ready to support one another further, to shine as your light in this world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our local community, for all people in their daily life and work. We pray for the young and the elderly for families and all who are alone. We give you thanks for human skill and creativity. We give you thanks and praise, dear Father, for all that reveals your loveliness and your glory. We lift before you those on whom we depend for our daily needs. We give you thanks for them and pray for them this day. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those who are in particular need this day. For the sick, the sorrowful and the bereaved. For the anxious, for the nervous. For those suffering in body, mind or spirit. And we give you thanks, dear Lord, that we know that you listen to our prayer. Could you say the names that um, are on our list? But know that there will be others and others that God will know about and care about Addie and her family William and his family Linda Jordan and her mum Wendy and family Jim, Joe and the family John, Liz, Dave and their family Daniel Peter, Alvin and their family, Mary, Martina and her family, Proudor, Martin, Jeff and Hilary, Esme, Peter and Bridget, Greg, Stephanie and family, Anne, Angela, 
Chris, Ali and Mia, Christine, George, Averill, Barry, Helen, Morgan, Mars's family, especially his wife, June. Lift up for you all those that are in need this day. All those named and all those who are on our hearts. We pray for all who bring comfort, care and healing. And dear Lord, we give you thanks for human love and friendship, for all that enriches our daily lives, for all that reflects the love that you have for us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. So let us commend ourselves and for all and all for whom we pray to the mercy and protection of God. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Eternal God, who enriched your church with the learning and holiness of your servant Thomas Aquinas, give to all who seek you a humble mind and a pure heart, that they may know your Son Jesus Christ as the way, the truth and the life, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and for ever. Amen. Believing the promises of God, as our Saviour taught us, so we pray, using whichever version that you wish. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and for ever. Amen. May Christ, who sends us to the nations, give us the power of his Spirit. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, happy birthday to uh, anyone whose birthday is today or yesterday or indeed tomorrow. Um, and uh, I hope you have a wonderful day I hope this I hope that uh, the sun shines on you this day well, I hope the sun shines on all of us it does seem to be getting a bit brighter out there um, which might indicate that it might stay on the cooler side today I hope you have a wonderful day and a blessed day and uh, I look forward to that time when we're together again very soon um, just have a quick look to see what the music is today holy 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 let's listen to shane claiborne i think it might be shane claiborne singing i don't know let's have a go Is this prayer again from Thomas Aquinas. Most loving Lord, grant me a steadfast heart 
which no unworthy desire may drag downwards, an unconquered heart which no hardship may wear out, an upright heart which no worthless purpose may ensnare. Impart to me also, O God, the understanding to know you, the diligence to seek you, a way of life to please you, and a steadfast and a faithfulness that may embrace you through Jesus Christ, my Lord. Amen. And may the peace of the Lord Christ go with you wherever he may send you. May he guide you through the wilderness and protect you through the storm. May he bring you home rejoicing at the wonders he has shown you. May he bring you home rejoicing once again into our doors. God bless you and keep you this day and I shall see you soon. Take care. Thank you.